Okay, so I want to prove that the language of all strings of zeros, which are of prime length, is not a regular language. So this is actually one of the more complicated uh, pumping lemma in the sense of traditional pumping lemma proofs, but we're gonna get through it. So we always start off every pumping lemma proof by supposing that L were regular. Then we know that there exists a pumping constant P for, for L, so that implies there exists a P for L. I'm just shorthanding it here. And what we need to do is we need to pick a string that's in the language and long enough, meaning that it has length at least P. So let's choose W equal to zero to the P. It's clearly of length at least P, and the, the P's match up, so therefore it's in the language. Except it might not. <laughs> so this P can be any integer. We don't know necessarily whether it's prime or anything. So we don't know whether this thing is a prime length, which is kind of crummy. So the way to get around this is use the fact that there are infinitely many primes. So whatever this, oops, whatever this number is, there's always a prime larger than it. In fact, there are infinitely many primes larger than it, although that's not as important. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm not gonna do this. I'm gonna do this in the way, here's how I'm gonna write it. So I'm gonna pick the next, pa next uh, prime above uh, P. So I'm gonna pick zero to the R where R is the next prime after P, okay? I'm actually not gonna do that either, uh, and we'll see why. So I'm gonna actually do after P plus two, okay? Well, there's always a prime at least P plus two, so that doesn't, that doesn't change anything. And since it's more than P, therefore this is of length at least P, and it's in the language because we forced it to be a prime, and so therefore that's not an issue. So you may think, okay, why, does, why is there a plus two here? So it goes back to the definition of what a prime is. So a prime, remember, is a number where the only way to divide it into it is either itself or one. There's no things that are um, at least two that multiply into P, okay? So where does this plus two come from? It comes from, we need to be able to exhibit two things that multiply to the length of the string's length. And the way to do that is to try to break up the string in a, a nice way so that we have two things that are of both length at least two and multiple, so therefore the length of the string is not prime. Why do we want a string that's not a prime? because we want to get a string that's not in this language, because we start off with a string that's in the language, and we want to end up with a string that is not in this language, okay? So we need to look at all decompositions, look at all decomps of this string w into x, y, and z according to the rules. Well, the, the whole string is zero, so it doesn't matter. And I'm not going to actually exhibit the, the three pieces because it's just not going to matter. Um, so uh, let's see. So what eventually what we need to do is we need to choose an, a value i such that x, y to the i, z is not in the language. Okay. Well, we don't know what this is. So we don't know what this length is, but we eventually need to exhibit an I for which it leaves the language. So since the string is only zeros, so the only thing that really matters here is the length of the string, not the string itself, because it's just all zeros. So let's try to look at that length. Oops. So I want to look at the length of, oh, not W, I want to look at the length of X, Y to the I, Z, whatever it is. Well. This is equal to the length of x, z, oops, x, z, plus i times the length of y. So uh, why is this true? 
because I have a, a single copy of X on the right side, a single copy of Z over here, and Y to the I, that's just I copies of Y. So that's just I times the length of a single instance of Y. So it's, it, it is literally the same string because it's all zeros, but I'm only considering the length of the string. Okay, so what can we infer from this? Well, we know based on the pumping lemma conditions that this thing is at least one. We know that the length of y is at least one. Okay, uh, how do we get from at least one to at least two? Because we need two things that are both at least two to multiply into the number. Well, we add one to it. So what we want, so, uh, so what we want is the length of y plus one times something and we want that thing to be also at least two. We know that thing to be at least two because we forced it to be, but we need something in here that is also a length at least two. And that's where the plus two from before comes into play because it turns out that we can sub into here the length of xc, which comes from, from this. And why can we do that? Well, let's see. We know that the pumping lemma condition says that the length of x, y is at most p. So the length of w then, which we constructed earlier, is at least p plus 2, because we did that little plus 2 thing, and p might itself be a prime in the absolute worst case, but even in that worst case, is at least 2 more. So that implies that the length of z itself is at least two. We know that to be true because even if x, y took all p characters at the beginning, there's still two more left and z is the only thing left in the string to take any characters. And so the length of z itself is at least two and x may be empty or maybe not, but it doesn't matter, it's at least two. So, uh, but how can we get from this line to this line? It's by subbing that value of i. So the value of i that we're going to pick is the length of xz. And if you actually check, that actually works out. Because if we actually compute this, so this is xz length plus the length of xz times the length of y. And since we got an xz in both cases, we're, I'm just going to factor it out and we're gonna get exactly the same expression that we had before, okay? So this is a interesting example of the pumping lemma in that the value of i that you pick depends on the decomposition, but that's okay. As long as you find some value of i for which you get out of the language, and we did, um, that's all that's needed. So we found a value of i, we constructed something that is some number that's at least two times another number also at least two. So whatever that number is, which is the length of that string, has to be composite, it's not prime. And so therefore this string is not in the language. And because of that, that shows that the language is not regular because if it were, it would always be a prime, but we found an example of where it is not a prime. So that's how you show that the language of primes is not regular.